Oklahoma citizens make a beer decision on election day, a 220 year old shipwreck leads to new fresh beer, and Harry Potter fans in Delaware rejoice. I am your host Chris Hardy and this is the Straight Beer News for the week ending November 13th, 2016. So the people of Oklahoma made a decision this week at the ballot box during election day. Up for vote was state question 792, which would change the regulations and the laws surrounding the, ser the selling of alcohol at retail outlets. Now you may remember, or maybe not, but in a, just a couple of months ago, I covered a, a topic about Oklahoma and their alcohol laws. And back in the previous video, which you can find right over the top of my shoulder in the upper right corner, the Attorney General essentially said that it is now legal for breweries to serve alcohol greater than 3.2 uh, ABW within the confines of their brewery. Up for vote this week was whether that high point beer, anything greater than a 3.2 ABW, could be sold outside of liquor stores. Currently, uh, high point alcohol sales have been confined strictly to these liquor stores uh, and they can carry nothing but alcohol, so not even chips or Doritos or mixers or even soda pop to put with your liquor, nothing of that nature, just strictly alcohol, beer, wine, things like that. Now this new law would permit other places to also carry the high point um, liquor and alcohol, um, specifically grocery stores and convenience stores. So the, the law passed during the election, um, so the, the laws will be updated and they will be kind of in the norm of what the rest of the nation is already. There are only a few other states that have um, strict limits on uh, alcohol percent and where it can be sold at. So they're kind of welcome into the rest of the country more or less, which in my opinion had been a competitive disadvantage for them since um, every other state is able to sell their higher point uh, beers that are made locally, craft beers made from their local home brewers were only able to be sold in liquor stores. Now they'll have larger distribution and footprint to those grocery stores that would like to uh, carry them as well as any convenience stores as well. The decision that was arrived at through this election this week will not go into effect now until October 2018. Uh, the legislature is giving the liquor stores uh, as well as the convenience and grocery stores a couple of years to um, acclimate to this new normal and to prepare new business plans going forward and how they're going to, to change what they do in order to accommodate for these new laws. Now just because the election has been done and the people have spoken doesn't mean that this is going to be the end of it. This isn't going to be all that we hear necessarily. There's already rumors of a potential lawsuit out there uh, from the liquor stores since up to this point they've more or less had a monopoly on selling these high alcohol content beverages. They're none too happy that the other players are getting into the game, especially large chains that are large and have large power to purchase and are our chains and essentially found, you know, almost every other corner in any given city, whereas they currently are limited to an owner is only able to have two stores. So they're at a competitive disadvantage now in some sense, and so there's a, a chance that they will push back with a lawsuit in the near future. Now sit right back, and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. Well, not exactly a tiny ship, and not exactly a tropic port, but I do have a story of a shipwreck for you. So in 1797, a British ship was leaving Calcutta, India, going down around Australia up to the port city of Sydney. When it crashed, it ran into a storm and it crashed somewhere between Tas the island of Tasmania and the, the mainland of Australia. The crew were able to pilot the ship onto an island and from there, they open boat, uh, paddled their way to the mainland. From there, they had a 600 mile journey to get to Sydney. And this travel was through hostile, aboriginal, um, as well as some non-hostile uh, areas of, of land to get through this outback part of, of, of Australia to the city of Sydney. There were 17 crew members 
that began the journey after being shipwrecked on the island, and they only, only three arrived at the destination of Sydney, so it was a treacherous long journey to survive. So great, you may be wondering, that's perfect. Chris, thank you for that great cute little story, but what's that have to do with beer? So let me tell you, uh, in the 1990s there was some undersea archaeological excavations made of the ship where it had been marooned on the island, and these archaeologists discovered um, barrels of liquor and beverages of, of all sorts. So there was uh, beer, of course, since this is a this is a story about beer, and there was obviously beer on board, as well as brandy and gin. The discovery of the beer bottles made them the record oldest known existing bottles of beer in the world. The next closest is a 133-year-old bottle of lager, which is sitting in a museum in Denmark. So of the 26 bottles that were found, some of them made their way to a museum in Tasmania, which is close to the island, as I mentioned, uh, where the where the ship originally was stranded and marooned. A researcher there uh, from the bottles was able to extract yeast and regrow it and um, try to make new beer from it. The beer brewing with this new yeast has been successful and they say it has a very light crisp kind of a flavor to the beer and they attribute that mostly to this different kind of a yeast and it has almost a cider sort of a flavor to it. They are looking to take it commercial, and hopefully it will bring additional revenue to the museum. They are naming the beer Preservation Ale, and, and it's named after the island that the shipwreck was uh, upon. So the island now is called Preservation Island, um, possibly, most likely, in honor of those men, the crew that survived the shipwreck, and who then persevered through to finding their way to Sydney. So the island is named Preservation Island and now this beer that's been brewed with this yeast found from the shipwreck is going to be called Preservation Ale. So I don't know if it'll be commercially available um, on, a, on a widespread scale, uh, possibly just localized to Australia, but it might be something to look out for in the future. This weekend Miss Billion River Brewing in uh, Delaware held a Harry Potter uh, fan party for their customers. They have brewed four special, five, excuse me, five specialty beers with a Harry Potter theme to them. Four of them are going to be named after the houses of Hogwarts where the students live, and one is a recurring annual beer that they put out this time of year, and it's called Deathly Hollows. Along with the beers, they are selling glasses to accompany those beers, so for each house uh, of Hogwarts, each beer will have its own specialty glass, so it'll be, for example, Gryffindor or Slytherin, and it'll have the, that house crest on the pint glass. Now the party wasn't just all about beer, they did encourage cosplay, so they expected their customers to arrive uh, in their full Harry Potter regalia, whatever uh, they like to wear, come as Harry or Hermione. Hagrid, any of the characters. I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan myself. I do follow the, the movies somewhat, so I don't know all the characters' names, but they were expected to come uh, dressed up ready to party. They were also having games like a beer quidditch, which I'm not familiar with that, as, uh, with that myself. So if any of you are familiar with beer quidditch, please explain to me the rules, how it works. I'm uh, genuinely uh, curious to know. There is also something called Horcrux Scavenger Hunt. Now, I don't know what the Horcrux part is, but I can assume a scavenger hunt is pretty familiar to most of everybody. So that was held yesterday, this Harry Potter theme day, in preparation for the new Harry Potter movie, which is coming out next weekend. And if you're interested in the glasses or uh, more information about the beer, I'll have lists to um, links to the stories and to the, uh, the brewery down below. Well, that's all the time that I have for this week, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I've been your host, Chris Hardy, and this is the Straight Beer News. Remember to come back to me every week. You can subscribe. You can receive notifications that when I post a new news item or a new news video, that you get that directly to you, and you can watch it immediately. Uh, so subscribe, please. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Leave me a comment in the comment section, and we can uh, interact back and forth through there. Also, if you want to reach me on the social media, I'm on straight. I'm on Twitter at straight beer, 
I'm also on Instagram and Untapped. You can find information for that down in the details section below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Have a great week.